Go ahead and remove your hubcap if you have steel wheels. If you have aluminum wheels, well, you don't have to worry about this. Try to be gentle with this. Sometimes they are stuck and they do break easily because they're plastic. I'm using a little pry bar. You can use a small screwdriver if that's what you have. There you go. And now with a 21 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts. The wheel is stuck on here, so I'm going to leave one lug nut on and then use a rubber mallet. Hit it from the backside, but don't hit the rim, hit the tire. There we go. Now you can take this lug nut off. And remove your wheel. Next, the drum has to come off of here. Sometimes it'll be frozen onto the hub. Mine is actually moving, so that's a good sign. If it is frozen, you can either use two 8 by uh, 125 bolts in here, thread them in, and that'll push it out of the hub. Uh, you can hammer it. You can do whatever it takes to get it off. I know mine is free. It's just a matter of wiggling it and getting it to come off of the shoes. There we go. Perfect. To get rid of all this dust, I'm going to start by using some brake parts cleaner and just rinsing down everything here. That way I don't have to breathe in any of the dust that's stuck on the brakes. I'm going to start by removing this large spring up here. I use locking pliers so I can firmly lock it onto the spring. Use the hub to pry. Pry this off. Next you have these little spring retainers. If you hold the pin from the back side, you can push them in and then twist them. You have to turn them 90 degrees. I'm going to use some needle nose pliers, turn them 90 degrees, and you basically want to match up. There's a little slot in there that has to go through the hole on this cap. You just want to match that up and make it fall through. Perfect. Remove the springs. There's another another piece here. This piece that you see here is actually supposed to stay with the spring. And I guess it's a little rusty. Take that off. Now you can pull the shoe off and the pin can come out through the back side. And you want to do the same thing on this side. Fortunately, this side is not as rusty. For this side, I'm going to use my locking pliers, clamp it onto the little cap of this spring, press them in. Twist it 90 degrees and remove the spring as well as the pin. Hold the brake shoe so it doesn't fall and remove the whole assembly. You can disconnect the two shoes here on the bottom with this little spring and now you can tilt this one out of your way. Next, disconnect the parking brake cable from the brake shoe. You can just Gently pry on the spring backwards and then pull this up. There you go. We need to take this lever off as well as the adjuster and move it over to our new shoes. So take the spring off and that pulls off half of the adjuster. That's all right. It has to come apart anyway so I can clean it. There's a little spring on the back of this lever. I'm going to grab it with some locking pliers and remove it. That'll release this lever and that'll let you remove the rest of the adjuster. Now right here on this pivot pin there's a kind of a C-clip locking ring that needs to be pushed out. With a pick I'm going to try and remove this locking C-clip. These go flying so make sure you either have a new one or can catch the old one. Now that you can remove this arm, there's another locking ring down here. To remove this with a screwdriver, I'm going to try to pry it in there and basically spread the two ears apart. When you put these on, you're supposed to squeeze them shut so that it doesn't come off. And to remove them, you do the opposite. As you can see, it's slowly coming out. Now I'm going to stick my screwdriver in that hole that I've created and pry it out the rest of the way. There you go. And that will allow you to remove the parking brake lever. This is your adjuster. You want to take this apart and clean it. 
You want to get all the old grease off and all the brake dust out of here. If yours is seized, you're going to have to unseize it, use some heat and some locking pliers. Just be very gentle in order not to damage anything. But I'm just going to clean off the brake dust and the grease and uh, make sure you save this little washer here. That has to go in between this fork and the uh, adjuster wheel on the side with no threads. Before I put on the parking brake arm, I'm just going to grease this pin just a little bit to ensure that this arm can pivot freely for a long time. Slide that on. Now we have to lock it in. I have a brand new clip here. I'm going to slide it on and as you can see this doesn't lock until you crush it together. So with some pliers I'm going to squeeze the end of it. Okay, so that's perfect right there. Now what you want to do is take your other lever. Gonna add just a tiny bit of grease. You don't want a whole lot here because you don't want it to get on the braking material. Add your other lever and take this little C-clip locking ring, press it right on, and that will lock in both of them. Perfect. Before I put the brake shoes on, go ahead and scrub the areas where the shoes actually slide on this backing plate. I just want to get rid of the rust and the flaky, flaky uh, paint that's on here. That way the new New shoes can have a nice flat area to sit on. And of course, I'm gonna add some grease to these spots. You don't have to add much. Just a little bit, just a nice thin coating. And I also like to add it right in here where the little hook goes in. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. To attach the parking brake cable to the parking brake lever on the shoe, I'm gonna use some pliers pull the spring back and then slide the cable down into the groove here of this hook. All right, once it's hooked on, release your locking pliers. To reattach this little spring that holds the parking brake lever, flip your brake shoe over, hook it onto the lever first. Just make sure that the hook of the spring is facing the right way. And then I'm going to take it with my locking needle and those pliers and just stretch it over into the hole. There you go. Make sure it goes in all the way. Perfect. I'm going to take the end of the adjuster, the one that is not threaded, slide it into this cutout here. And I need to pull on the parking brake lever as well. This pin needs to go through that hole. Be as gentle as possible. You can slide this uh, end in and then slide this over. So that's what it has to look like. Before the other shoe goes on, make sure you grease up your adjuster so that you can put it on when the time comes. Put a little bit of grease on the threads and then I like to start the adjuster with the threads completely bottomed out. I can adjust it after the drum goes on but if it's bottomed out, then I know I'm starting at zero basically and going out from there. And this end also gets a little bit of grease. Make sure you still have your little washer in there. And this area here is the part that goes into the end that's already installed on the other brake shoe. Now before we reattach this spring, I want to take my freshly prepped lubed adjuster, put it on with the longer area towards the shorter part of the spring and the longer part of the hook of the spring, you want to attach into this rounded hole over there. You kind of have to angle it at a weird angle and then just press it down. Make sure it's attached. Take your adjuster and slide it into this other piece here. Now, take the shoe, slide it up and over Make sure it's hooked onto the top in the brake cylinder as well as on the bottom right here in this retainer. Then you can take your pin, find the hole through the backing plate and slide it all the way through and hold it right there. And then you take your spring with two caps, one on each end, line up the slot for the caps, press it on 
and if you twist it 90 degrees, it should lock on, and then the pin will hold your brake shoe in place. Now you can take your other side shoe, put the bottom spring on, hook it onto the other shoe as well on the bottom, and I like to pry the spring with the leverage of the shoe, so line up the bottom here, hold the top of this shoe, bring this top in place, and now if you just gently hold them there, it'll stay. Now bring your pin through the hole in the backing plate, add your spring to it, line up the two slots, and press it on, give it a 90 degree twist. There we go, sometimes this is easier with some pliers. Now make sure the shoes are slid into place. Spin your adjuster so that the cutout in the adjuster will match up with this cutout here. And then take your spring, and I like to use some needle nose locking pliers. That way I know I have a good grip on it. This is under quite a bit of tension. Lock them on tight and pull the shoes. This is gonna be the trickiest part of it all because you have to line up the adjuster and the spring at the same time and make sure that the shoes don't pop out. The adjuster's in. All right, once it's in the hole, there you go. Press it on, make sure it goes in. And now ensure that they're both locked together, seated properly. Perfect. Before the drum fully goes on, I'm gonna clean the inside surface right here. It's coated in oil from the factory so it doesn't rust on the shelf. And you wanna clean it off, otherwise your brakes are gonna get all oily and that's no good. And before you put it on, I have a new hub here. If yours is old and it's rusty, go ahead and use a wire brush or a grinding disc, whatever you have to do to get all the rust off. You don't want any rust trunks on here because that's gonna make the drum sit crooked and you're gonna get braking issue. Put on some indices. Try not to get it too much on the brakes. When you put your drum on, you wanna make sure that you line up this hole in the drum with the large hole on the hub. That's gonna allow you to adjust the brake shoes through the drum. You don't have to take it off, you just take the wheel off. There you go, match that up. So for drum brakes, you want a little bit of drag you want to hear them touch, and when you spin it, you don't want more than one and a half rotations out of this, so it can't just keep, it can't just keep spinning freely. In my case, I need to tighten up the e-brake shoes because they're way too loose right now, so I'm gonna spin the adjuster wheel up top here, adjust them out a little, and just go little by little because even one or two turns will make it way too tight or way too loose, so right now I can already feel I made it a little bit too tight, so I have to back it off. Okay, so that's pretty much exactly where I want it. If you follow the text, it spins about one and a half times and it stops, so that is perfect. And if you have a rubber boot to go in there, go ahead and insert that. That's gonna prevent water from making its way into your brakes. Go ahead and put on your wheel. Start on all five of your lug nuts, snug them up, and then torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Double check them. Now don't forget about your hubcap if you're dealing with steel rims with a hubcap. If you do have one, make sure you match this cutout with the valve stem, otherwise your valve stem is gonna get crushed. And press this right on, and then you're done.